Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, it's the month of establishing right motives. Motives are very, very essential in what we do or don't do. Motives are the grounds for doing things. Grounds for asking what you ask in prayers. Motives. The grounds for serving God the way you do. Motives. The grounds for being in church today, either virtually or physically here, there is a motive for it. Colossians 3.17 Colossians 3.17 tells us whatever you do in word or deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. We are living in the physical world and of course in this physical world the world of the five senses where what we do can be seen what we do can be heard what we do can be touched what we do can be felt what we do can be smelt with words we are doing something say so whatever you do in words in word so with your word you are doing something when we say a word we are actually doing something with our words don't we make promises we make promises with our words and behind every word or deed there is a motive consider it you woke up this morning and you decided to come to church not just to come to church but there is a motive for coming whether to come to church to improve yourself spiritually or whether to come to church just so that they don't say I'm not in church there is a motive and behind every deed and word the ground the reason for what you are doing or what you are saying is there for saying something or doing something the way, that way. Why that way? Why not the other? As believers, therefore, our motives must be right. Our motives must be open and in line with the word of God. That's why Paul wrote to the people of uh, Colos, it says, whatever you do. So there is a motive for whatever you do or say. Make it right, make it a right motive, and God shall establish it. So if you and I can be so scrutinizing to scrutinize the motive for whatever we shall begin to do, from this month on in this month we are saying that whatever thing you shall say or you begin to say or do with a motive with a right motive that is what god will establish say amen to that amen so whatever you do he said do all in the name of the lord jesus and the word of God can really help us with the right motives. If we follow the word of God, the grounds for doing whatever we do or say will bring glory to God. Look at John chapter 8 verse 12. John chapter 8 verse 12, the word of Jesus our master then spoke to them again saying i am the light of the world 
he who follows me he who follows me there is a motive he who follows me that is the motive why do i follow jesus why am i following jesus that is the motive he who follows me shall not walk in darkness that is the result of your motive i'm not following him for nothing i'm following him for something he said he who follows me shall not walk in darkness that is the result therefore me because i am motivated to follow jesus i cannot walk in darkness but what will i get i will receive the light of life amen again john 3 16 john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son let's read that together for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son yes that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life do you see that even god has a god has a motive here he says for god so loved the world love was the motive behind god sending his son you see for god so loved the world he loved you and i and he still loves us for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten begotten son so there for bible student love was the motive the basis god gave his son his only son for you and i why that whoever believes in him whoever that is you and i we are the whoever that is why we are here today hearing the word of god that is why we become the light of this world just like jesus say you and i whoever believes in him should not perish do you believe yes if you believe in him he said you will not perish but have everlasting life behind every motive of what you say or do in the name of the lord there is a result see the motive for us serving the lord here is everlasting life is love for him and we get the result the result is everlasting life you see behind the motive of you and i serving god the result of it is what everlasting life today we're talking on serving god with the right motive serving god with the right motive 1 john chapter 5 verse 14 shall be my text 1 john chapter 5 verse 14 now this is the confidence that we have in him everybody say confidence you don't sound as if you have one everybody say confidence, confidence. this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us can we read that together please now this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us we have confidence we have confidence how if we ask anything how many things anything we have confidence if we ask anything according to his will so be careful what you ask be careful for what you ask for because it says we have confidence 
if we ask anything according to his will so whatever you and i ask or wants to ask must be in line with his will and what is the confidence that we have he hears you provided whatever anything you ask is in line with his will he hears you so it's not an issue whether god hears me or not hear me i know he hears me how do i know because what i have asked and what i am asking is in line with his will amen so does god hear prayer yes if it is in line with his will and that is how you and i become confident in the prayer that god hears us the question is how confident are you when you pray how confident are you that god hears you as you pray is anybody here confident that god has heard your prayer how confident are you that god hears you you know i am confident that when i pray god hears me why because i ask according to his will is that the case is that the case with you how confident are you and if not why not remember whatever you do do all are ah, in the name of the lord jesus number one how we pray matters to god and this is where our confidence comes from how we pray you hear the phrase knowledge is what power what gives us confidence what will give you confidence when you pray is the knowledge of god's will what will give you confidence when you pray and as you pray is the knowledge of god's will that you know john chapter 10 verse 10 john chapter 10 verse 10 jesus says said the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy i have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly now you know the difference between the thief the devil and god the thief comes to do what to steal and to kill and to destroy but god comes to give life and more abundantly hallelujah so if you have the knowledge of what god will do and what god can do when you pray how then will you have prayed in fear or confidently you will have prayed confidently confidently because knowledge is what power you have been harmed with the knowledge of what god will do and what god can do won't you be confident when you pray yes if your prayer is for god to kill someone then your motive is wrong why because God does not kill people. So how confident you are 
as you pray shows if you knew that God hears you when you pray. I said, how confident you are as you pray shows if you knew that God is hearing you as you are praying. And how you pray is a function of what you know that God will do. Isn't it? And what God can do. Will you not be confident? Because you know what God will do. And that will make you to even pray. You pray confidently. Can you count your mind to numerous times in the past that you have prayed even up to now that you have no answer? Why did that happen? Are there lessons you have learned when you did not get answers? And what will you do differently now that you know what you did not do then? This is how our confidence beefed up. But for you not to have learned from your lessons, for you not to have learned why some prayers were not answered in your life, for you have not, for you not to have regarded knowing why some prayers were not answered, that is, that is not helpful. Matthew chapter 14, Matthew chapter 14, verses 25 to 26. Now in the fourth watch, the fourth watch is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went, Jesus rather, went to them walking on the sea. He went to the disciples walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. If you notice, they cried out in fear when they saw someone walking on the sea. They did not know who it was walking on the sea until when they heard the voice of Jesus. But their first reaction when they saw a body walking on the sea was fear. And fear made them to cry out. Fear was the basis, the ground for them, for why they cried out. Was that not the case? Fear made them to cry out. Do you pray out of fear? Or out of faith. How do you pray? Because how you pray determines whether you are confident that God hears you or not. Pray in faith. Don't pray out of fear. Let faith be the backbone of your prayer. Let faith be rather the driver of your prayer. We all heard about Elijah the prophet. He was confident in his prayer. And God honored, honored him. 1 Kings chapter 17 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 to 7. Verse 1 says, There shall not be any dew nor rain this year's except at my word. The word of Elijah. Can you see how, how confident he was? There will not be any rain unless I, so, uh, unless I say so. 
Elijah prayed that there be no rain. And after three and a half years of no rain, Elijah prayed again that there should, there should, there should be rain. According to James chapter 5, verse 17 to 18, he prayed again, I want rain to come now. Is that not confident? That's confidence, isn't it? Elijah was a man with a nature like hers. Verse 17 of that James 5. Elijah was just like you and I. What is the scripture telling us there? It's telling us that as Elijah was confident in his prayer to God, so you and I must be confident even better than Elijah because we are now under a better covenant. Hallelujah. So what Elijah did, you and I can do better. Say amen if you believe. Amen. That's it. Because we are under a better confidence, a better covenant. How confident are you that God hears you when you pray? Is the question. How you pray determines how confident you are that God hears you as you pray. How you pray is important. It determines how confident you are that as you are praying right now, God is hearing you. How you pray comes from the knowledge of God's will that you are equipped with. The knowledge of his will. In Mark chapter 5, verses 25 to 34. Mark chapter 5, verses 25 to 34. There was a story you know, and I believe you know very well, of the woman with the bleeding problem. Don't you? She had this problem for how many years? Twelve years. Twelve odd years. But how she prayed, this is what I want us to pay attention to. How she prayed when she heard about Jesus gave her the confidence to come out publicly to Jesus and as a result she was healed immediately. Verse 27 When she heard about Jesus she came. Did she not? She came. And that coming was a good motivation. The knowledge of Jesus was a motive for coming. Was that not the case? Yes. When she heard it was Jesus, she was not hiding anymore. She was hiding before with her shame. But the moment she heard that Jesus was passing by, she came. Hallelujah. And I believe that you yourself, because you are hearing the word of God today, will be a good motivation for you to do as occasion demands. Say amen. Yeah. That's it. When she heard that it was Jesus, she came to Jesus. That was the motivation. The knowledge of Jesus was a motive for coming. Amen. Verse 28. Because there's nothing you can do or say that's, that is motiveless. Everything we say or do, whether as you are in your house or outside, is with a motive. But what I'm telling you is that it is incumbent on you to have a right motive. Because it's only the right motive that God will establish. So that you don't waste your time wanting, wondering why is my prayers not being answered. 
and that's why i said if you look closely how many of your prayers that you have been praying this year has god answered hello you will know and if they have not been answered why not shouldn't you know shouldn't you know you should know and find us so that lessons can be learned so that you can improve but some whose heart is not in the right place will not bother to find out but that will change today amen verse 28 for she said who said the woman with the problem said if only i may touch his clothes i shall be made well you need to speak to you you need to talk to yourself isn't it you need to talk to yourself you look yourself look at yourself in the mirror and talk to yourself talk to your prophesying to your life what am i doing wrong here if you are honest with yourself you will get the right answer and if you are honest with yourself come on that answer as you do it your life will change for she said, if only I may touch his clothes. Why would she touch his Why would she touch Jesus' clothes? Because she believed that if I touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. To me, that was that was a prayer. If I can touch his clothes. I shall be made old. This problem has been there for 12 years. This problem has made me poor than, it's, than I started with. Remember this woman spent everything she had on physician rather than the condition getting better grew worse. Does that, does that describe you? Verse 29 immediately hallelujah everyone said immediately. immediately immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up what took her 12 years 12 odd years within a second god cleared it that what does that tell you about god what, what does that tell you about the knowledge of the will of God in your life. That woman, when she heard it was Jesus, she came. The knowledge of Jesus was the motive for her coming. And see, it paid, it paid, it paid off. As she known what she knew 12 years before. I she know I she I she known what she knew 12 years before her condition will have long gone true but it's never too late with God it's never too late that's the reason why she now know what she has taken her the secret of what has taken her 12 years there's a reason there's a reason for you now knowing what will be the panacea of the problem 12 years later there's a reason and that reason is what we're talking about because knowledge is really power not knowing at all you know it's possible for her to have continued in our predicament for another 12 years. True? Has she not known about Jesus? This tells you the power of knowledge and the confidence this knowledge gives us when we pray. Do you get the gist now? Therefore, how you pray how you pray 
goes a long way in your confidence that what I have prayed about, God has heard me. Serving God with the right motive. 1 John chapter 5, verse 15. Let's go back. 1 John 5, 15. Are you getting something? That's it. And if we know that he hears us, now you know, don't you? Because you know the knowledge of his will. Why would I go to God to bless me? Why would I go to God to heal me? If I did not, if I had not known prior that God can heal me. Now that I know that God can heal me, it gives me the confidence to come to him. And if we know that he hears us, get ready, if we know that he hears us, if you know that God hears you, that's what he's saying, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Do you know that God hears you when you pray? If you don't know, I want you to know now that God hears you when you pray. Especially if what you are saying is in accordance with his will. God will hear you when you pray. If you pray according to his will. But then, this is another twist. Just because he heard you, just because you know that God hears you when you pray, does not mean that he will answer you. God refused Moses access to the promised land. God heard his prayer, but God did not answer Moses' prayer. Moses' prayer was that for God to pardon him and let him go to the promised land. Remember. So just because God heard you or God hears you, doesn't mean that he will answer you. Number two, not only is how we pray of importance to God, what we ask in prayers also is of importance to God. Not only is how you pray key to you having confidence that God hears you in prayer, what you pray for in prayer also will give you confidence that God is hearing you. The prayers you pray, did God answer you? And if God has not answered you, I want you to begin to find out why not. You need to find out because as you find out, it will help you in your relationship with the Lord. Unfortunately for Moses, it is true that God heard him and God did not answer Moses. But the way God answered Moses was not the way Moses had expected. In Deuteronomy 23, Deuteronomy 3, Deuteronomy 3, 23 to 26, Deuteronomy 3, 23 to 26, God gave Moses the answer 
but not the answer that Moses had expected. Why, why was that? When God refuses your petition, it is because he is not pleased with you. God was not pleased with Moses at the time because what God told Moses to do was not what Moses did. And so, the answer that Moses wanted from God was not what God replied him. Maybe you are in the same condition and you are wondering why your prayers has not been answered. Learn from this. Also in Numbers chapter 22 to 24, the prayer of Balak was not answered. Even Prophet Balaam learned the hard way what to ask for in prayer. Balaam says, all that the Lord speaks, that I must do. Remember, whatever you do, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. In James chapter 4, verse 3, James chapter 4, verse 3, hear what Apostle James said. You ask and do not receive you get that you ask and do not receive so it's not everything you ask god for that you will receive and i will you know the reason don't you from what we have said about moses and also from what we said about prophet balaam especially when what you ask it's not in line with the will of God. So James says, you ask and do not receive. If you have not received what you have been asking for, won't you pause to find out why not? That is for somebody that cares. Even God wants to know whether you care or you care not. You ask and do not receive. Why? Because you ask amiss that you may spend it in your pleasures. So, very quickly, there are three reasons why we don't get answers. There are three reasons why we don't get answers to prayers. Number one, if our heart is not in the right place. What we ask, God will turn it down. How can we ask amiss? When you ask amiss, it means that you are asking wrongly. You are asking inappropriately. In your request, you miss the mark. That's what it means. So how can you miss the mark in your request to God? Is a question. Especially when you are asking God to do what God cannot do. Take for instance, God is just, isn't it? Is that not? God is just. Is that not the case? Good. It cannot be unjust. If you ask God to do what he cannot do, that is wrong. That is the wrong approach to asking God to pray. If you are asking God to do what he cannot do, our prayers will not be answered. So number two, therefore, why prayers 
why would you you might not get answers to your answer to your prayer is when you are asking in the wrong way you're asking god in the wrong way remember balak balak wanted balaam the prophet to pray in the wrong to prophesy against and curse the people that cannot be cursed and God opposed it. And Balaam almost fall for it to ask God to do what God cannot do. Therefore, it is necessary for anyone that is praying not to pray inappropriately. And that is why knowledge is important for anyone that loves God. The knowledge of God's will, what God can do, what God will do, is where you start from. That should be your motive. Don't pray without an agenda. Don't pray agendaless. Don't pray motiveless. It's a waste of time. To him that knows what to do and does not do it, it is sin. It's a waste of time. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Here, the last advice from Apostle Paul to the people of Corinthians. He says, examine yourselves. Examine yourself. So he's telling them, examine yourselves. So I'm telling you, examine yourself whether you are in the faith. Why are you doing what you do? <laughs> Why are you doing what you do? Remember, whatever you do, do all how? In the name of the Lord Jesus that is the first place to start. Be open. Be naked to God. Whatever you do, examine it, scrutinize it properly. Get your motive right. Because there is going to be a reward. There is going to be a reward. Whether good or bad. Whatever you have done, he said we shall all stand before the throne of God. Of, of Christ, isn't it? To give account of what we have done in this body. Whether good or bad. What is your motive when you pray? Every day, I kneel down by, my, by the side of my bed. As I wake up, open my eyes, I do that. I commit myself to God. Even before I speak to my wife at all, I commune with God. Commit that day into the hands of God. That is my daily motive. And I do the same thing every day when I want to sleep. Again, I kneel down. Commit myself again to God. Spirit, soul, body. To thank Him for how the day has been. So that I can sleep well. Even in your sleep, you have a motive. Your motive is to be well rested. And of course, if you are troubled, would, would that not affect your rest? What is your motive for serving God? You are a minister. As a pastor, every day of my life, every day of my life, I present my motive to be a better pastor before God on a daily basis. When I study the word of God with my wife, I study with motive to get the word of God from this scripture. I don't study the scripture to preach, just to preach. I study the scripture to be equipped. I preach to myself. 
It is when I preach to myself that I can preach to you. Every day. My own Bible study is not something I do in 10 minutes. Yes, I have work that I do, but before I start my work, between 7 and 9, I've already spent time studying the Word of God. If you say, oh, I don't have time, you have time. You will have time if your mind is there. What is your motive for serving God? What is your motive as a Christian? Why are you in church? What is your motive for not being in church when you are supposed to be in church? God will question you. How will you answer? You will lose your confidence if you are, if you are going to go to, to pretend as if you don't know what God is asking you. You will lose your confidence and then you will give the devil the, the advantage to now accuse you before God that you are dodging the question and you know it. A bad motive God will not honor. That was why God did not honor the request of Balak what he wanted Balaam to do. Coming to church with a wrong motive or doing a service with wrong motives is no brainer. Acts chapter 8 as I begin to round up. Acts chapter 8 Remember we're talking about the three reasons why we don't get answers to prayers. Brother Simon was a member of the church, but his heart was in the wrong place. His lifestyle has not changed since the time he began to come to church. He was a believer, he became a believer but his heart was not in the right place. Look at verse 13. He was amazed seeing the miracles. You see? Seeing the miracles that was done. Verse 18. And so he offered to buy the gifts of God. When Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, what did he do? He offered them money. Was his heart right? Was his heart in the right place? No, his heart was not in the right place. He was in the church, but his heart was not in the right place. So it's possible to be in the church but with the wrong motive, just like Brother Simon. So calling people brother or sister is a title because we identify them with Christ. But just because they call you brother or sister, don't you ever forget that God sees what you are doing behind closed doors. Brother Simon wanted the gift of the Holy Spirit with a wrong motive. He offered them money. See, many people will buy, will want to buy gifts. You know, they want to buy gifts if it is sellable. But no, it's a wrong motive. He asked a miss. He missed the mark in his request. The question is, what about you? Will you admit? Have you missed the mark in your request? It's one good thing for you to be, to be open. Because we all have to look at, look at ourselves in the mirror. Ask yourself, could it be that I've missed the mark in my request? Could that be the reason why God 
has turned down this request. Number three, why prayers might not be answered is when we dishonor God in our lives, we disobey his word. He will not answer us. Moses' prayer to enter the promised land was turned down because Moses, the friend of God, dishonored God before the people. When God told Moses to speak to the rock for the water to come so that the people would drink the water, Moses, out of anger and frustration that comes with leading very difficult people, he forgot about what God said and he just smacked the rock. Smack the rock twice. Water came out though that was not what God told him. So God did not allow Moses to enter the promised land. Another prophet, Eli, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, Eli's ministry was short lived. Because it is honored God. Hear what God says. For those who honor me, I will honor. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in summary, from today, examine your motives as you serve God. If you're a pastor, bishop, minister, choir leader, Whatever you do, a soul winner, evangelist, Bible study leader, youth leader, children leader, whatever you do, examine your motives. In whatever role you are given as a believer, <laughs> examine your motive. Because motive is important to the result you will get. No one does anything without a motive. Even what you say, there is a motive behind it. Some say it's hidden agenda. There is a motive behind it. Your motive matters to God. And if your motive is right, God will establish, establish you because it's going to bring glory to him. So my advice to you is let the word of God be the basis of your motive. Whatever you do, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes, you and I can serve God with the right motive. Not grudgingly. <laughs> what makes people to grudge is because their heart is not in what they're doing. If you don't continue to pray for a request that you know is pertinent to your life, then why, do you, why are you surprised that it has not been answered? You don't pray once if it matters to you. Your whole life must be on it. Let us pray. Commit yourself to God. Ask Him to show you where you've gone wrong in this new month. And as we approach the middle of the year, remember there are still so many outstanding things left undone, prayers left unanswered for some time now. When will you start being concerned about them? 
but you still want to play I don't care attitude don't do that when the ways of a man pleases God God will make even his enemy to be at peace with him I want to be at peace with yourself and I want you to be at peace with God what is it that is holding back the answers to your prayers right now I have a witness in my heart that you know it you can only know it because God is the one that is showing it to you see the word of God is like a prophet a seer Hebrews 4 12 says the word of God sees your thoughts and your intent is the discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart the reason why you are hearing this word the reason why you are seeing yourself right now in this predicament is because of God he wants to help you God does not delight in your in your problem no he wants to make your life better that's why he's God let devil be shamed let God be glorified from today ask God to help you whatever is showing you that you have done wrong if I were you I will hone up and I'll say I'm sorry I will lift my hands up and say Lord forgive me help me help me I'm ready to follow you I'm ready to do your will from today is somebody praying please pray please pray tell him I surrender all to you forgive me of my sins forgive me of my waywardness I'm talking to that youth as well yes you two have a problem at your early age yes just like the older ones why don't you pray let the older one pray let the younger one pray we all come before God let's take away the veil from our faces let's take away the veil from our hearts so when a man turns to the Lord the veil is removed remove the face mask remove the mask from your face remove the mask from your heart let's be open to God be open to God ask him to save you don't pretend just ask him save me I need to be saved it would, it's telling you something that you have forgotten to do years back do it now is somebody out there that wants to say Lord save me I need to be saved say it's only those that are sick that need physician the one that is not sick does not need a physician so it means that there are some people that don't need God you see there are some that don't need God but if you are like me I need God that's why I'm here that's why I am preaching to you <laughs> because this is the work that God has called me to do why don't you ask him to be your Lord and Savior call out Jesus call out his name say whoever call unto me I will no wise cast away whoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved including you right now this is a new month things have to get better surrender everything to him and ask him to save you to give you another a new lease of life to write your name in the book of life ask him to save you to give you his life to give you his life Jesus Christ said I'm the way the truth and the life ask him for the life his own life to give to be given to you eternal life said the gift of God is eternal life in Christ ask him 
for that eternal life. I can assure you, you will not be the same again. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Whatever service that he asks you to do, do it. You are doing it for God, not for man. And God will give you the reward. But if you are doing it for man, you will get man's reward, but that reward will not be long-lasting. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Lord will bless you. Lord will bless you. Now we know how this month is going to be for us. It's going to be with jubilations. It's going to be with testimonies. It's going to be with promotion. It's going to be with salvation. It's going to be with progress. It's going to be progress galore. Progress galore. If that is your if that is for you, why don't you begin to thank him? Progress galore. Progress galore. Lord will bless you. Lord will bless you. We'll bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. Come on, thank him. Thank him. He deserves it. In Jesus' holy name, we have prayed. Amen. Come on, let's clap those hands. Let's clap those hands together for the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.